Good morning one and all. Today's lecture topic is properties of amalgam. To assess the quality of amalgam, one should understand the properties. They are dimensional change, compressive strength and creep. In this class, we will be learning about dimensional change and compressive strength and various factors influencing them. Dimensional stability. On manipulation, amalgam might expand or contract. On contraction, the amalgam will cause micro leakage sensitivity and formation of secondary caries. With the expansion of amalgam, it causes protrusion of filling. On biting, it causes pain and thereby fracture of the restoration. So, the minimum range recommended uh, uh, for amalgam is 15 to 20 micrometers per centimeter at 37 degrees centigrade from 5 minutes to 24 hours after the beginning of trituration. So to understand the mechanism of dimensional change, we need to understand it occurs in two stages. The first stage is contraction, the second stage is expansion. When alloy and mercury are mixed, it results in contraction of the uh, restorative material because all the alloy particles they tend to dissolve in the mercury. This dissolution of alloy particles in mercury results in the formation of gamma 1 phase which uh, leads to the contraction as the gamma 1 phase uh, keeps growing these crystals will tend to impinge on one each other in the presence of mercury that leads to the expansion so once a gamma 1 solid uh, rigid matrix has formed the growth of gamma 1 crystals cannot force the matrix to expand further so initially with the dissolution of alloy and uh, particles into the mercury uh, leads to the contraction that is the volume of gamma 1 particles is less compared to the individual volume of alloy and mercury. Later on with the growth of gamma 1 crystals uh, they tend to impinge on one another in the presence of mercury content leading to the expansion of the restorative material. Over a period of time this growth stops as there is no sufficient amount of mercury available for the further growth of the crystals. This is the mechanism of the uh, dimensional change. So what are the various factors that favors the contraction and that favors the expansion because as we learned that amalgam can either contract or expand on manipulation. Uh, initial uh, phase it contracts later on it expands. The factors that favors the contraction are low mercury alloy ratio because the, if there is no sufficient amount of mercury uh, the growth of the uh, gamma 1 phase crystals will does not happen. With the higher condensation pr uh, pressures the excess mercury will, uh, uh, will be expressed thereby the availability of mercury will be less. With that also it, it causes uh, it tends to contract uh, even with the acceleration of the setting by longer trituration and smaller alloy particles also the favors the contraction of the restorative material the other way around which favors the expansion is greater mercury alloy ratio and greater uh, copper silver content in the composition so these are the factors which influences the contraction and expansion of the amalgam restorative material this is the graph uh, which shows the uh, contraction and expansion of uh, uh, amalgam uh, the maroon color uh, uh, line which is extending which is a dispersed alloy that is a low copper alloy uh, which tends to get expand the other two uh, orange and the blue color uh, lines in the graph uh, uh, which tends to contract more which is a high copper alloy so, this is the graph uh, depicting the dimensional change of uh, alloy in respect with respect to of uh, time. So, what are the effects of uh, moisture contamination during the manipulation and what are the dimensional changes that can occur? When a zinc containing low copper or high copper amalgam is contaminated by moisture either during trituration or during condensation a large expansion occurs. This expansion usually starts after 3 to 5 days after placement of amalgam into the cavity or it also extends up to over a period of time or for few months. So the expansion that occurs during this period will be greater than 
4 percent that is 4 micrometers per centimeter. This expansion is called as delayed expansion or secondary expansion. Uh, how does it occur? When a zinc uh, comes in contact with water, the hydrogen gas is liberated. This hydrogen gas gets accumulated within the restorative material, uh, leads to the uh, secondary expansion or delayed expansion. So, here is the graph showing the delayed expansion of an amalgam uh, with respect to that of a time. Uh, if you see the excesses which depicts the time, the expansion keep on increases after uh, 24 hours of time and then it extends over a period of uh, time. What is the clinical significance of di this uh, uh, dimensional change? The delayed expansion of amalgam often causes intense pain because with the protrusion, with the collection of hydrogen gas within the restorative material which causes the protrusion of uh, the filling. This protrusion of filling causes uh, 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 high points in the restorative material which in turn causes uh, intense pain because of the wedging effect that is created between the restorative material and to the cavity walls. And this pressure causes uh, uh, this this causes pressure on the pulp thereby the pain. So, the pain usually gain experienced after 10 to 15, uh, 10 to 12 days after the placement or even uh, uh, within first 5 days of the placement of the restorative material. This protrusion of filling will cause marginal fracture on biting. Again, that further leads to the leakage and discoloration leading to the pitting and corrosion of the uh, marginal surfaces thereby reducing the overall strength of the restorative material. So, with this dimensional change it has lot of ill effects on the restorative material or survival rate of the restoration uh, like marginal breakdown, uh, increased porosity, leakage and reduced strength. So, uh, once we understand the dimensional change and its effects on the restorative material, there is this property which is very very important for any uh, restorative material to withstand the mastigatory forces. Uh, the innate strength of amalgam is sufficient enough to withstand the mat mastigatory forces, but it has a lesser tensile strength that is the reason we modify the uh, cavity designs to withstand these tensile forces and bend according to the tensile stresses. And we will be learning about various factors that influences the strength and uh, here comes the tabular column which shows the compressive strength at first 7 hours after placement and the uh, in the first 1 hour and 7, hour, seven days and it also uh, shows you the tensile strength at first 24 hours. If you see here the we have a different values of uh, different types of uh, uh, alloys. That is low copper, uh, low copper alloy, uh, admixed high copper amalgam and single composition high copper amalgam. Uh, if you see the single composition amalgam has 262 mega Pascal at the first one hour and at the end of seven days it will be having 510 mega Pascal which is the highest uh, compressive strength of the amalgam. So, it can withstand the uh, mastigatory forces and it has a tensile strength of 64 mega Pascals. So, as I uh, told you uh, just before, uh, there are certain factors which influences the strength of the amalgam which we want to understand the properties uh, to maintain, uh, to attain the maximum strength to your uh, restorative material. So, the, what are the factors that influence are their tituration, mercury alloy ratio, condensation, amalgam hardening effect and porosity. These are the 4 or 5 factors which influence the strength of an amalgam. Uh, what does how does this trituration affects the amalgam is uh, and the type depending on the type of alloy how long you are uh, uh, triturating or the what is the speed of your triturator all these factors will influence uh, either under trituration or over trituration will decrease the strength of the uh, both the low copper and high copper alloys amalgam so, so irrespective of the type of amalgam uh, one should uh, give importance to its trituration that is the manipulation of amalgam. Uh, it should not be either under triturated or the over trituration. And the next factor which influences the strength of the amalgam is the mercury contents. Uh, greater the mercury contents it will, get, it will promote the formation of gamma 2 phase which is the weakest phase which contains more of the tin. Uh, even even uh, high copper amalgam which eliminates the gamma 2 phase uh, 
over a period of time as the amalgam restoration ages uh, it also shows uh, uh, it also shows the fracture of the restorative material this is how the mercury content influences the strength of an amalgam and the next factor which influences the strength of amalgam is the condensation as we spoke earlier uh, these are the factors which should be uh, considered very seriously during the manipulation of the uh, amalgam one such uh, property is condensation either it could be a lathe cut amalgam or spherical amalgam uh, it should be given a right condensation pressures for a lathe cut amalgam because of the irregularity of the alloy particles it requires a higher condensation proper for for proper manipulation of alloy and mercury content uh, this tend to express express i mean releases a more amount of mercury so excess mercury is uh, released from the restorative material for lathe cut amalgam with high condensation uh, uh, pressure thereby we can uh, retain the strength of the restorative material whereas for a, a spherical amalgam we doesn't doesn't require any higher condensation uh, pressures it requires only light pressures if you give high condensation pressures that will punch through the restorative material thereby decreasing its strength so to attain adequate strength for lathe cut amalgam we should give high condensation pressure for spherical amalgam a light condensation pressure is sufficient so the here comes the another uh, a uh, factor which influences strength is porosity why do you get this porosity because if you don't the conden we do if you don't condense it properly uh, we can see some voids and porosity seen within the restorative material or on the surface of the restorative material which affects the compressive strength significantly uh, a delayed condensation or under titration also causes the porosity so in, in either you should uh, under uh, titrate or you should not you should give a sufficient uh, condensation pressures uh, during uh, placement of the restorative material to avoid porosity if there are porosities and voids obviously that will decrease the strength of the restorative material and here is the last factor which influences the amalgam harden which influences strength of the uh, amalgam is uh, amalgam hardening rate uh, the ada specification number 1 Uh, states that the minimal compressive strength that is required in the first one hour is that 80 mega pascals. Uh, the one hour compressive strength of high copper uh, single composition alloy is, is 262 mega pascals, uh, which states that it's sufficient, more than enough for to withstand the mastigatory forces in in the first one hour. But however, the patient should be warned not to subject the restoration to high biting stresses at for at least eight hours after placement uh, to attain its um a uh, maximum compressive strength and uh, prevent from uh, fracture of the restorative material usually we will see the bulk restorative fractures uh, occurs within first two days one or two days uh, because it 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 will requires uh, at least seven days to gain its uh, maximum strength uh, even for uh, high copper amalgam alloys so in this class we have learned about dimensional change and the factors and clinical significance of dimensional change and that strength and various factor that influences the strength of an amalgam in the next part of properties of amalgam you will be learning about creep tarnish and corrosion and the self sealing ability of amalgam uh, so i hereby conclude that the clinician should have a proper idea about the properties of a restorative material to you to make its use uh judicially thank you